Welcome to the Ideal Investor Show. This is the podcast where we help you challenge your mindset and discover where you are. Tired of stories about other people's success? We can help you change your life, determine your time freedom point and join us on the journey to financial success. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the Ideal Investor Show. I hope you're all doing well and uh, you're enjoying the summer. So today I wanted to touch on something that has been going into the news and it again is a little bit related to all the stuff that is being reported about the presidential elections and stuff like that. But I don't really want to get into that. I just want to kind of contemplate for a moment what would actually happen and how would it potentially impact us as residential real estate investors. And what I'm talking about is kind of this whole idea of deportation meaning like a lot of the illegal immigrants that have come into the country in the last four or five six years or even before where some politicians either on the state level or on the federal level basically say we need to find a way to send these people back to where they came from or at least outside of the country now the numbers are varying massively some people say they're eight million some people say they're 15 million some people even say 20 or 25 million it's kind of i have no idea how you would really know exactly how many people it is but it's a very large number of people and obviously the politicians always make it sound like well every community that receives somebody like that they just basically rent a hotel and then these people are forever and ever living in a hotel that is paid by the government but in my opinion that is not the reality for most cases people come into the country and they obviously want to work and, and support their families and stuff like that so they try to find jobs and opportunities where they can work without having to show that they are legally in the country and that they have a work permit and all that kind of stuff now one of the things that also happens is when there is some income these folks typically have a tendency to be much more community oriented than we normally know this because at least the way i have uh, seen it both in germany where i originally came from as well as during 30 years in the united states is there is a much higher level of individualism we are kind of like all self-made we are supposed to be successful individually or for our family but not in larger communities and when you look at the fact that a lot of the immigrants come from south american and middle american countries there and it is much more common to basically be more community oriented and what that really means in this context is that those folks basically oftentimes in construction, in landscaping, in kind of handyman type jobs where they support a small business owner or stuff like that, and they learn or can already apply existing skills. And then the next thing that happens is, okay, let's say they see that there is a place that they can get for relatively cheap. Like I did the research actually, and there are places in the country where you can actually buy a property or get a property for $20,000, right? Or $30,000 or $40,000. So really low prices. Now, where would illegal immigrants get that kind of money? Basically, the one thing that can sometimes help them out is owner financing, so to speak, right? Where they basically say, okay, I take this property and I pay every month and they can do that because they have income. But the other thing what I'm actually getting at is what they're doing then is because one of their friends works in landscaping, another helps a plumber, the next one helps an electrician. And they learn enough in relatively short period of time so that they can basically DIY, almost like a flipper, renovate one of those relatively cheap older houses. And then they move in and live there. And then the next guy in the community finds another one. And they fix that up and somebody moves in. And so as a little community, if you imagine a community of like 50 or 100 families in a larger community or city, they can go around, find the oldest, most rundown properties and then apply the skills that they learn and fix them up enough so that they can live in it. Now, if you then imagine, as some of the politicians say, they want to deport or get rid of 10 or 20 million people, not all of these people live in government published housing or hotels or apartment complexes or stuff like that. So some experts say there will be a lot of inventory coming online because of these people then being forced to leave. I'm not going to discuss if this is legally possible or how this would actually work out and how do you round up 10 million or 20 million people. I have no idea. But assuming that this were actually possible, the question then becomes, what is the impact 
to the housing market. Some people put up horror scenarios where they say, okay, they, all these people live somewhere. They all leave relatively in a short period of time, let's say within one or two years, then all this inventory is going to come online. When we're talking about housing inventory, whether it's apartments or single family homes or anything like that, we cannot just say, okay, here is a house and a person lives in it. Because in reality, whether it's an apartment or a house, there's very rarely one person in it most of the time we should actually assume three people on average, right? So if you say, okay, let's just make it easy and say we were to deport 9 million people, that would mean there would be 3 million housing units becoming available. If we deport 18 million people, then that would make 6 million housing units, whether it's apartments or single family houses, duplexes, what have you, available. I want you to just understand when you see these headlines and that some people say this is actually possible to get all these people out of the country. What does that mean for us? And I believe one thing that it will relieve and balance out a little bit is that any of the experts that I find all admit and say we have at least a 7 to 10 million unit shortage. And the shortage in, in that sense means we have just built not enough inventory for the population. People live in conditions and in, in units where they don't really want to be, but they can't afford any other place. So if even 18 million people were deported and 6 million new units out of that were suddenly available within a year or two, that would barely balance out the 7 to 10 million, dollar short, uh, million unit shortage that we have. Why am I saying all of this? I don't believe the horror scenarios that make it sound like when these people get deported, there will be a collapse in the real estate market because suddenly so much inventory becomes available. Now, the one thing that it will probably do, and I agree with that, is that prices will either stagnate or go down a little bit when so much inventory becomes available right away. On the other hand, if prices come down a little bit, then people who are investors like you and me, we would look for properties that we can get so that we can basically add them to our portfolio and make them available to those people who want to live in a property but couldn't afford it or just none available. Long story short, if this deportation idea were to actually become reality, I want you to be uh, thinking about it. And if you take my point of view, I would say don't worry too much about it because I don't really think that it will be a massive, especially not a lasting impact on the market for two reasons. Number one, I don't think you can round up 5, 10, 15, 20 million people in any short period of time. That's one. So it will take, if it really became a law or something like that, it will take much longer than people anticipate. And the longer it takes, the more gradual the impact will be. And on the other hand, if it's true, and I believe very strongly it is true that we all along had been having a significant shortage, then that shortage will finally balance out. Either way, we will not really have these dramatic impacts that the media is let, letting us believe or wants us to believe. And in a way, this is just another example why the media is always just spreading fear right, to paralyze us. And I want you to know that there is no reason to be paralyzed or fearful because markets go up and down and we in a very long term investment strategy. And these kind of changes are always portrayed as if they happen overnight. And then in reality, you can be lucky if they happen in five or 10 years. And if it takes something like five years to even get make a dent in this whole deportation idea, then we will be fine. That's it for today. If you haven't tried it yet, I would like to invite you to go to idealinvestorshow.com because you find a button there that says book a call because I would love to talk to you about your investment needs, what's happening with the real estate market going forward, where are we, where can we be, what can you do and how can you start participating and how can I help you shorten the time from making the decision I want to make an investment to actually get into the first property. We have now examples where we have been able to help people within two months to get their first property if they're ready and, and committed to invest. So I would love to help you with that. Let's get in touch, make a call. And until then, be well and stay safe. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.